concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. This is why John Kennedy was killed. He understood the conspiracy. And as far back as the founding fathers of this nation, they knew that there would be those who would try to take over the um, set up, uh, what do you call the, uh, the Bank of America. Private Central Bank. A private central bank. And they were told to guard against that. And under Woodrow Wilson, in 1913, the guard left. One of the Rockefellers met on Jekyll Island with Paul Warburg and his brother, who were from the Rothschilds. They wanted to set up like the five uh, children of Rothschild Sr., the Bank of Italy, the Bank of Austria, the Bank of France, the Bank of England, all started by the banking family. Well, who cares who the politicians are, Mr. Rothschild said, as long as they control the wealth. So they bankrolled both sides of a conflict and ended up ruling both sides. Fighters say they often manage to defeat much larger armies like the Iraqi military because they're not afraid to die. Al-Qaeda in Iraq four years ago was allowed to set up bases in the west of Iraq and invade eastern Syria. They started the civil war four years ago in Syria. They were given massive funding. They're 65 percent, according to NATO, of the rebel force. The Council on Foreign Relations last year had the headline, Why We Need Al-Qaeda. And they said, give them air support to take over the country and we'll remove them later. Bull. I know Obama is just a pitch man, a CEO, as you say, but at the same time, I didn't support him or McCain because I was just hoping that Obama would come in and actually bring reconciliation, how naive I was. Clearly the systems used him to create racial division, all these problems. Look at what they did to Gaddafi. A Republican couldn't have gotten away with that. Imagine if Bush would have been doing that, what you would have had to say about him. I know you had strong words for Obama, but now Obama, Hillary, the neocons behind him, turning loose a multi-hundred thousand man army to run around murdering all these innocent people, killing Muslims, killing Christians. And then our media sits there and tries to spin it when Anderson Cooper is endorsing the rebels in Libya, in Egypt, uh, in places uh, uh, like we see in Syria. And then even our arch allies, the Egyptians go and join the Russians now. And it's on national TV there and in their print that our government runs ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Another threat that President Obama mentioned was ISIS. Well, who on earth armed them? Who helped to arm the Syrians that were fighting against Assad? Who created the necessary political climate that facilitated the situation? Who pushed for the delivery of arms to the area? Do you really not understand as to who is fighting in Syria? A, do you agree with that? And then B, what do you think this signifies that they would be so bold as to run this radical proxy army against the world with a hope of having a clash of civilizations and then blaming it on Islam and the Muslim world in general. I mean, cannot the Muslim world see it's a major setup, a part two of 9-11? There is a power in, in one that is called Mahdi. That's the guide that the Islamic world has been expecting. And Masi or Messiah which the Christian and Jewish world have been expecting. And this Mahdi, when he comes, his number one aim is to set justice in the earth and remove every tyrant 
and set up a government of peace. That's his aim. That's the aim of the Messiah, the Christ. Now what we are looking at, these are, these are not spooks and spirits that come out of space. These are human beings anointed with power and wisdom to do exactly what they purpose to do. That's why I know the globalists will never win. It appears that they're winning, but their plot is turning in against them. God has said, you have to reap now what you've sown. You've destroyed cities and towns in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, things that you didn't want. America destroyed them. Now look at your cities. They're underwater. Your farmland being destroyed. Fire burning the lands of California in the West. Tornadoes, hurricanes. And it's just the beginning if we don't. This is just the beginning. And that is what I wanted to say about whoever will be our president. If you're not dealing with that which has incurred the wrath of God, then you can't make America great again. And you can't bring America back from the abyss that she's falling into. Within the next few years, the dollar that we kill each other for will be devalued into nothing. What will people use when the dollar is gone? What will happen to the world? A war is coming, and that war will clean the slate. And whatever is left will find a way to become one with each other. We have no other alternative than either to live together in peace. We have gangsters running this country. Criminals, gangsters. The bigger this war gets, the more freedoms we lose. We have a fog that has descended on our entire nation. The, the globalists, globalists are, are gonna, gonna blow stuff up and blame it on you. But Hillary's the one who runs the cover-up. Everything you've heard us talk about is now gonna unfold in triplicate spades. This is real as it gets. I had a Supreme Court justice tell me to my face, it's over for me. I said, Matt, it's over for you. They've got the votes now to enforce copyright law. You're out of there. You want it, baby? You're about to get it. We did meet the British at Concord Bridge to serve tea, be tolerant, and see how many guns or what kind of guns they came to take. We met them at Concord Bridge and we blew their punk ass brains out. InfoWars has been able to break every record, infiltrate every operation, blow the criminal cover of operatives more than any other institution out there of freedom. And I'm so proud of that. The notion that Hillary has somehow been an advocate for women, no, Bill rapes them physically and then Hillary rapes them psychologically. I hope the enemies of this broadcast when you lie about us, when you censor us, when you attack us, when you delist us, when you do that, you're signing on to the other side. These people are of the devil. Let's be very blunt about this. Raise hell and demand accountability. It is the most corrupt, degenerate, criminal government in American history. From the front lines of the information war, it's Alex Jones. The crowd is now moving forward toward the barrier. The police have been telling everybody they are going to shoot if we don't move back. Their defeat will be ultimately a crushing one. This is the heart of 1776.
The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv.